Here's my lovely girl Matilda. Now you can see she's absolutely fine, but last night we had a little freak accident in the cage which had totally terrified me. And even with the experience I have of uh, looking after rats, things sometimes happen out of your control, however careful you are. Now my little Matty was in the cage with her two little girls. Hello darling. Hey sweetheart. She is it with her two little girls and with Primmy. I'll, I'll actually, I, I don't actually think that's a good idea to play with the things that I want to talk about. Let me take them. Um, anyway, they're all four girls were in the cage and they were getting really excited because I was about to open the door, got the barricades up, got the cover on the floor, got the toys out. And they always do that. They jump about by the cage door, really excited, can't wait to come out. Anyway, what happened was the bigger girls jumped on top of Matilda, they pushed her down and her leg got caught in the smaller part of this hammock clip. Now this is one of my safe hammock clips, I've used them no problem for about eight years. I will continue to use them but I am going to change the way that I use them. Um, I've checked with my from my friends pictures and they have all been hanging their hammocks the same way as I have so I'm making this little video to let everybody know what's happened just so it's something they can be aware of. I still think of all the hammock clips they are the safest ones. Um, there is a little hinge down there um, but you know they're, they're fairly smooth. These little tiny ones I don't get on with because I can't open them. They're very uh, difficult for people with weak hands. And you've probably seen my videos where I've told you not to use these big ones because there's been a, a few cases of baby rats getting caught in them and um, sometimes with tragic results. So I'm still going to use my safe hammock clips. I'm just going to pop these others back up here. But I have changed the way I use them. So we've always previously attached this part to the hammock, to the, the D-rings or the clips on the hammock, and had this part attached to the cage. We're now reversing it so that this tiny bit here, um, I'm not sure if we can see at this angle, but you'll see the smaller part is attached to the cage and the larger bit is attached to the hammock. So there's plenty of room for a little leg if it should get caught in there. Now with my um, actual cargo net, I can see, I can't really see here, I've, it's the other way round. I've still got the larger part attached to the cage and the smaller part to the cargo net, but that's because the whole of the smaller part does is filled by cargo net, so there's absolutely no way for um, your rat's, maybe you can see from this angle, there's no way for your rat's leg to get trapped in that tiny bit at the bottom. And also they're hanging at a different angle, so they're straight down rather than the hammock ones which tend to lie sort of more of a horizontal angle. So that's what I'm doing and um, you see at the back there, so it's that way. So it was very unpleasant, terrified me. Oh, as you can see now all four rats have just deserted me. I spend the first five to ten minutes of playtime surrounded by rats, then they're off. In corners, underneath cupboards, um, They've got approximately about a quarter of the room here that is barricaded off. We used to use the whole room, uh, but because we've got more furniture and things in here now, that's a clean washing pile, clean hammocks, always clean hammocks. Um, we've at the moment currently got a quarter of the room for them, but we will be expanding back to half the room because we're rearranging. But yes, you just see them occasionally, you'll hear them, that they're rustling behind the cages. Now the other thing I, um, I, I must just say, don't panic. So what I did, I must just tell you how I resolved the problem. I panicked, I'm saying don't panic, but I panicked. You hear your rap squealing and crying in pain and fear you're going to panic I panic but while you're panicking you've got to think very quickly what can I do because the longer she struggled there's a fear that she would get her leg caught further I was worried she was going to break her leg lucky my barricades were up I opened the door I had to let the other rats go if there's someone else around I would call them to help you to watch the other rats then what I did was um 
this was actually the hook was actually further down i've actually moved it up higher now so hopefully um, it was it was closer to the cargo net so i've moved it up higher so hopefully it can't possibly happen again but um, what i did was i put one hand under matilda's body i had to get my hand inside the cage um, i would normally i if it's a rat that you know is going to bite it's a bit difficult situation i don't know what i would have done because I have been badly bitten by a rat that I tried to save once before who was only been with me a couple of months and he wasn't very keen on me helping him but Matilda is so good natured so I put one hand underneath her to support her with difficulty reached in and unclipped the other clips so that the hammock was then loose and then I supported Matilda with one hand the hammock with the other and luckily she freed herself because I obviously didn't want the weight of the hammock on her. Now, that's all I could do. I don't know what I would have done. I don't know any other way, but luckily, with this type of clip, there was enough room. Um, I was terrified that she'd, we were off to the vet, but um, she was limping, so I had a look at her leg, and there was no cuts. There was It was holding at a normal angle. But obviously it was in pain, she'd had a shock as well, so I gave her a cuddle and I put her back down on the floor. She's still limping, but she's walking on it. And then this morning she's walking absolutely fine, but I just kept picking her up and cuddling her. And in the end I kept checking her leg every few minutes for bruising and for swelling. And in the end she was like, get off me, I'm fine. And I gave her some treats, but it's another reason why you should always have your carrier ready to go at a minute's instance. Um, have your little your pet carrier handy in case you have an emergency visit to the vet. I was terrified. She was upset. It's the thing no rat parent ever wants to hear is their poor little baby crying in fear or pain. And uh, yeah, I had to sit down and have a cup of tea and have a biscuit and recover myself afterwards. And I'm still going to use my hammocks, but I'm very wary. I actually slept downstairs last night because I thought, oh my goodness, I just don't know what to do if I've done the right thing. And I think I have. Um, I say it's a freak accident. Use these hammock clips for at least eight years, no problem. Now, the other thing I will just talk about safety is um, I always keep a little pair of scissors by the cage. They are, sh uh, they are pointed scissors, um, but they're short bladed. And the reason I do this is because I once had a girl who had made a head hole, a hole the size for her head in a hammock, got herself wedged and was squealing. And luckily we were at home that day as well. And we couldn't get her out. We couldn't manoeuvre her out. So um, one of us had to gently hold her body from inside the hammock and we... I had to sort of get my fingers between um, the, the actual scissors and the rat and with tiny, tiny little cuts, very gently and slowly make the hole bigger. You obviously got to be very careful and always keep your finger between the blade. Now this is very difficult because the hole was tiny, but you have to just very carefully manoeuvre and it's always easier if you've got some help. So yes, that's a lot of looking at the empty hammock, but always be prepared. Now today my little girl is having as many treats as she wants because she's had a scare and I've had a scare. But I think, you know, um, you've always got to be prepared. It doesn't matter how well prepared you are. An accident can happen. I'm just thankful that she's okay. I would have been so, so upset and traumatised if she'd broken her leg because I would feel totally responsible, which of course I would be responsible because I've set the cage up. But where I've looked at my way my friends have hung in their hammocks, they're all doing it the same way, which is why I thought I'm going to make this video. It's just another safety aspect. Everything I do is about keeping rats healthy and happy and safe. And I've only had, since I've been filming in five years, I've only had the two incidents that have happened. I'm very overcautious, and when the rats are out, I'm watching them all the time. We're in this little area here that is completely barricaded off and safe for the rats. So they can run around freely, which is nice. You're really tucking in, aren't you, Matty? You, 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 did you hear your name, Matilda? Here comes Primrose. And she's been stepping up and keeping me company at night. Another thing that I've always said is when you lose your 
your little favourite rat. I mean, they're all my favourites, but when you lose your one that spends most time with you because they want to be with you, they leave a big void. And there's always another rat who will step up and take that place. And uh, Primrose obviously needs the comfort as well after losing Violet and then Lara, especially Lara, because they'd always been together from the time they were very, very tiny. So she has become my comfort rat at night who spends more time with me on the sofa. When the others have gone to sleep, Primmy's standing at the door waiting to come out and she'll come out and sit on the sofa with me because it's been a hard year losing first my cuddly Ned and then my cuddly Lara. Violet was never really a cuddly rat. She was just a jumpy, springy, have fun rat. But I still obviously miss her just the same. I miss every single rat that I've ever owned. And um, <laughs> they're all so different. But just a reminder really to check your cages every day. I always check that there's no sharp edges. Here she goes. <laughs> Primrose. Not a good idea. Now I will have to put the camera down and stop filming for a second. Let's just put the camera here for a minute. Primrose, come here my darling, come here, that's it, good girl, there we go, now we're filming the rat corner, there she is, there we go, um, so you've always got to be watching them because although Primrose is quite happy to hop across the cages, there is a gap at the back and she could fall. And I've got at the back there at the moment all my spare stuff that I'm sorting for selling and my bags are bedding. So I don't want her to um, obviously fall. So I think it's a case of constantly checking. I check for sharp edges, um, if there's any edges, chewed edges on any of the plastic um, houses or litter trays, I sand them down. So I think it's just safety. Everything is about keeping your rats happy, healthy and safe. And... Uh, if I can tell you, I'm always very honest, if something happens, I'll tell you exactly what's happened, why it's happened, and what I'm doing about it. And if it helps just to save one other rat from this sort of trauma, one other owner from the, the trauma that I've gone through. I'm sorry about my hand today as well, I'm really shaking. I think it's a result of yesterday, I'm still traumatised thinking about it. So if I can help one other person keep their rats safe, then that's worth me talking about it so I'm going to say bye for now and um, thankfully my little darling's okay